العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعده So we go to a shurut al wudu, shurut al wudu. Okay, so this is the dars al thani ashar. This is dars al thani ashar, the twelfth shurut al wudu. The conditions of wudu. So the first four are conditions that you find in other than wudu. In other than wudu, these are conditions that you will find in other places, such as salah, shurut al salah. Zakah, Shurutu Zakah, you'll find in them the first four, which is Al-Islam. Person has to be a Muslim. Wal-Aql, person has to have the sanity. Wal-Tamyizu, person has to have discernment. Wal-Niyyah, person has to have an intention. Okay, <clears throat> so these are Mutadakhilatun Bayna Ibadat Ukhar. Okay, ibadat ukhra. They are also entered or intermingling with other ibadat. As for a niya, a niya is bil qalb. Mahalluha al qalb. Wat talafu biha bid'atun. Kama yakul al ulama. A niya, its place is the heart. And uttering it is a bid'ah. To utter the intention is a bid'ah. Only time you utter is fil hajj wal umrah. When you say labbayka hajj or umrah or whatever. It's the only time you utter. Otherwise, it's in the heart. And don't think nahar when you're slaughtering and you say bismillah Allahu akbar. When you slaughter in the name of Allah, this is the dhikr that you mention. Just like you say bismillah before you drink, it's not a niyyah. So, there's no manafat. Bainahuma. Alright? The difference between al aql wa tamiz. Okay? A tamiz means discernment, and this is as it relates to the child because they haven't reached it. maturity. A maturity that is capped to the fact that they know right from wrong. So, a one year old, for example, he'll climb on the table and fall off. But an eight-year-old won't do that, most like most cases. Or sometimes a three-year-old or a four-year-old still hasn't reached him years. So we don't look at the number. That's why the ulama, they say, for ten years, al the most authentic view is la laha or la haddalahu. There's no had. It doesn't actually have a prescribed actual age. But what they do do is they try to round it up. So they say roughly, when he's around seven, they say roughly seven. And also, that's taken from the hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, in which he said, Muru abna akum bisalati li saba. Order your abna, order your children to pray at seven. So the ordering here is at seven, but then the discipline for it is at ten. So if a person, if a child reaches tamiz, if a child reaches tamiz, which is that they reach discernment and they can decipher and tell, and some of them, they can even, some of them, subhanAllah, they can even wrap up their own breakfast. You'll find a five-year-old or a six-year-old can actually get the cereal, put it in the bowl, get the milk and put it and eat. Some of our children do that. So she's reached Tamiz, or he's reached Tamiz. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Some can talk at the age of two and a half and three. Jazakallah khair. And they know what they're saying, and, and they can differentiate between things. So there's, that's why there's no had for it. It just depends on the child. And an aql, so the difference between that and al aql, al aql is for everybody. Al aql is actually means sanity. Then he mentions, so he mentioned Al-Islam wa Tamyizu. So Al-Islam is the first. Right? 
because it's not accepted from the disbeliever. We already learned this. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Waqadimna ma amilu, waqadimna, waqadimna." As Allah says, "We brought forth what they did of actions, fajalna huhaba and manthura, and we made it literally uh, scattered." And Allah Azza wa Jalla He mentioned that the disbelievers they shouldn't enter the masajid, i.e., pray. شاهدين على أنفسهم الكفر أولئك حبطت أعمالهم while they testify and bear to the fact and they have borne they have borne to the fact that they testify upon themselves disbelief Allah says the, them their actions will be null and void and then we have a niya or afan then we have the fifth which is it was تسحاب حكمها بأن لا ينوي قطعها حتى تتم طهارته the person should have an istishab. An istishab here, what really it means is niya. What it really means is niya. Meaning the person should have a continuous, he should be continuing in this ruling that he's in. Meaning the ruling of having the niya of doing wudu. That he doesn't intend something else until his tahara is complete. So, if the person is in the bathroom, for example, they're in the shower, and they've had their shower, they can't say to themselves, okay, now I'm going to do wudu, and then when they get to the face, they'll be like, oh, subhanAllah, I just realized some area is still a bit dirty, but I'm going to wash that quickly, then I'm going to come back to the face. No, you have to continue. Or you can't intend to do anything. I and mean, you guys can think of your own examples after this. Whatever. The person cannot cut, cut their intention. And the intention is that they should continue to do wudu. They're going to finish it off, stick to that, and then anything else after that. Then he mentions the saddest one, qita'u mujibil wudu'i. And that the person should remove any mujibil wudu. Any things that necessitate wudu. Meaning, for example, who can give me an example? Anything that's kharij, kharij as sabilaini. Anything that's coming from the two, part, the two paths. Okay, number one and two. Or, not only number one and two, what else? La, passing wind is not. Who agrees? Our brother Hakim said passing wind. La? Okay, that's because I said it's not. <laughs> be brave and stick to your opinion. Not, not, don't be hard headed though. There's a thin difference. There's a thin line between being strong on your opinion and being hard headed. Hard headed is when you, know, when you know you're on the wrong. Sisters, what do you think? Passing wind, is that a, is that, does that mean is inqita'u uh, mujibin? Uh, oh, Afan, sorry, sorry. Allahu Musta'an. Sorry. In Qata'u Muj, uh, the passing wind is, 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 it is. So I, I looked at my notes and actually it's for the next one, which is Istinja'u wa Istijmar. Istinja'u wa Istijmar, you don't need to do it for passing wind. Allahu Musta'an. Ala kulli hal. So the point is the person has to stop those things that make Mujib, which is anything that comes from the two privates. So passing wind, Medhi, if it's pre semen if it's anything like that that is coming out, or, you know, urine or whatever. May Allah honor us all. That means that the person has to refrain from that, stop that. Then, once they've ceased and stopped, then they can do wudu. Now, this is the one, number seven. Wastinja wastijmaru qablahu. That a person has to do istinja wastijmar. And istinja, what does that mean? That's the other one. Istijmar. Okay? Istinja is to use water. And istijmar is to use what was used at the time, which is rocks, stones, leaves, which is obviously now in replacement for tissue, paper. And which one is more preferable? Water. Water is more preferable, although you can use istijmar to get rid of the ayn al-qadira. The the initial usage of it you can use it for the initial usage especially for for the back 
You can use it for the initial usage and then use water. And it's preferable to do that. And you can just suffice with water. Or you can just suffice with istijmar. As for passing wind, and this is where we had that uh, khalt, that uh, mix up. The wind, passing wind, you don't need to do istinja or istijmar. Another example I wanted to give actually for going back to the previous one, when qita'u mujibin, is like for example, someone's eating lahm al jazur. What's one of the things that break wudu? Eating camel meat. So if the person's still chewing, he's still chewing the meat. Maybe he's got the tough, toughest part. Of, he's still chewing the toughest part. And he's doing wudu. La, you have to spit that out. Okay? Anyway, so going now to the eighth. وَطُهُورِيَةُ مَاءٍ وَإِبَاحَتُهُ That a person should have... Uh, Actually, before I go to the 8th, the 7th as well, there's an extra point to add on to that. The person doesn't have to do istinja or stijmar for another thing that breaks wudu as well. Who can guess? Good. Sleeping or losing consciousness. So when you wake up, you don't need to wash it. You don't need to wash anything. Any of your privates. You don't need to wash it. You just do straight wudu. Now moving, and I promise I'm finished with this now. <laughs> moving to the 8th. The cleanliness of water and its, its, its uh, permissibility, meaning it's, you haven't, it's not from ill-gotten gains. Purification of water. Some of the ulama, they have differed, as Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al-Abad mentions in the Sharq Shurut al-Salah, al-Kalu wa wajibatuha he says, as for the second part of this statement, tuhuriya tuma is that water should be pure. Everybody knows that. As for its permissibility, meaning it wasn't stolen or something like that, he said this ishtirat is mahalu uh, khilaf or mahalu nazar. And he's of the opinion, he said, actually, there's, it's okay. It, you're sinful for stealing. For example, uh, the one who does, yani the ghasib al the one who steals a land. Still the house, the house he prays on. You have to pray in the land, right? You have to do sujood in a place. Or the one who steals the water, or the one who steals the clothes that he covers the private with. Okay? What about if the person steals? What about if the person stole a thobe? Still be valid? Okay? You want to stick to that? Still be valid. Sisters, what do you think about a brother that stole a thob? Can he pray on it? Huh? Yeah, if it's stolen. What do you think? It's okay. Say, قُلْ مَا فِي رَأِيكِ قُلْ مَا فِي رَأِيكِ Say what's in your view. It doesn't matter. What do you, what do you guess? Mm -hmm. Okay, mashallah. So you have that view. Tafadal uh, I think there's a difference between no. the thawb isn't actually attached to the salah. Mm -hmm. I like how you're thinking outside the box. The, the thawb is not attached to the salah. But here, remember, we're talking about things that are before salah anyway. Like satr al awra. This is a condition before the salah. So it's not exactly connected to the salah anyway. The, the correct view is that there's a tafsil, there's a detail. That's the correct view. The correct view is, is detailed. Meaning, meaning, if that is the only thing he's wearing, then that's covering the private. But if he's wearing a stolen thaw, but underneath it, he's wearing trousers and things that are not stolen, which one's covering the private? The trousers and the, un the underwears and stuff like that, right? And, and you know, obviously the underwear is long enough, especially for the brothers, right? What about, um, what about Jilbab? She says, what do you say about Jilbab then? Based on what we just explained. <laughs> huh? Okay, that's a view. Well, that's a view that you put forth. Tadal, Ikhwan, nah. Ma'indakum shay. 
you think it's permissible. Why would you say that? So you mean it's impermissible? As in, it'd be permissible for them to use it because they're skin from that. But they, but remember, we, remember what we said. We just explained that if the thing, according, by the way, this difference of opinion with uh, whether it, the permissibility of this item, yeah, and if it's stolen, whether it nullifies you from using it, such as the water. There's a difference of opinion. We're talking about just according to those who say it is. We're giving examples according to those who are of the view that it is a condition. So what would you say is the jilbab a condition? Yeah, because um, us men can wear clothes under and cover the other skin, right? Mm -hmm. Women, it's only something. But she stole it. You think she stole it? Don't have to but remember, he said ibahatu. It has to be yeah. permissible according to that view. You, they wouldn't, he's, are you saying they wouldn't be able to use it? No. He's saying he's saying they would. He's saying they would. Oh. Yeah, he's saying they would because they need it. We're saying we know they need it, but a it's stolen. They need the water, don't they? But why do we forbid them the water if it's stolen? According to the opinion that says if it's stolen, you're not allowed because you stole the condition. You can't steal a condition. You're getting a condition from haram means. The correct answer is that for them their case is different because they need to they need the whole jibab to cover everything anyway so it, when you say if their private is already covered covered with what because when the woman is praying everything has to be covered except what face and hands do you get it and that's what the jimari the khimar it comes down so it is responsible for head to toe we don't, we don't look at what she's wearing inside. So it is the thing that she, so for her case, yes. Okay, for her case, yes. All right. Now, but her case, okay, it's going to be, it can also be similar to the brothers, depending on what layer was stolen. So for example, she's wearing a jilbab. Has she covered the shurut for salah? She's covered the shurut for salah. But what about if she's wearing uh, akramahun Allah, something underneath? that is stolen now that thing underneath is not exactly responsible in her case for covering the aura and similar to the men as well it can be if you're wearing a trousers the trousers covers you but if you're wearing the underwear that's stolen right the underwear is not really the underwear doesn't even cover you anyway so that's how you look at things you look at what does the what fits the condition of covering in terms of clothes obviously we're talking about in terms of clothes right now let's talk about in terms of water the water we said, according to the view, that it has to be ibaha. What about if this water, okay, if this water was your water, but you stole the container it has in it. Now you're using a container to carry it, to do your wudu. You're using a bucket that's stolen to do your wudu. So think carefully about this one. It's the same as when the person is using a boat, whereby they're sitting for the actual container. But the water use is still okay. But why do you say that though? Because if uh, because the container isn't attached to the actual ibadah, then good. I was gonna say I was gonna let the sisters try, but good. Because again, we have to always look at what is the actual thing that does the condition. So in terms of clothes. You have to cover the aura. Okay, what's covering the aura? Is it the stolen underwear or is it the trouser that's doing the covering? Is it the jilbab or is it the stolen whatever underneath? Right? If it's the actual thing according to this view that's doing the covering that is stolen, then according to this view, batul at salah. And if it's the actual water that's doing, because that's the, you don't use, we, we, don't, we don't do wudu with a, a bucket, it's not what you do wudu. A bucket is just considered so sinful for the bucket and you're sinful for the clothes. For stealing. <clears throat> now, moving on, inshallah ta'ala, well, we said we're through about eight now. Now, now, so, uh, now, to hurry to, so the person doesn't do with uh, water as nejis, obviously, has to be pure. Wa izala to mayam na usuluhu ila al basharati. Okay, the ninth condition that the person has to remove that thing that prevents the water from touching the body. Okay, like Al Ajin, and I think Ustad mentioned this last week. The, you know that the bandages, bandages, um, 
plasters, uh, paint, okay? Things that stop from entering. As for if it's something that changes the color, you know, like Sheikh Muhsin Abad mentions, then no, like henna. Because henna, all of that changes the color of the skin. It's actually the water still touches the skin. Okay? And also, we, the nails as well, those tips as well, all the way to the tip even. Anything that touches, uh, takes, uh, yani, takes you away from it. And where is this hadith? Where is that evidence for this? The hadith of the sahib al Qadr al-Dirham, the person who done the wudu and he left a part that was dry, Qadr al-Dirhami, lam yusib hal ma, water didn't touch that, and the Prophet Sallallahu told him to go do his wudu again. Naam, waylu lil aqab min al-nar, because they also similar, they, uh, was it, they're the same situation as well. They didn't have uh, that an area that was, that was, uh, no, because if I'm not mistaken, the wording of the hadith also mentions that. that there was a qadr al-dirham lam yusib al ma Now we we'll move on, inshallah ta'ala, to sunun al- uh, there's, Before we move on to uh, furud al-wudu, there's some sunun al-fitrah. These are called sunun al-fitrati. These are the sunun, a natural sunun that a person should do. They are number one, al-khitan. And that is circumcision. And that is from purification as well. Since we're in the chapter of wudu, khitan is circumcision. It is wajib according to the man and sunnah fi haqqin nisa. But wajib for the man. Number two, qassu sharibi, trimming the mustache is from purification. تَقْلِيمُ الْأَضَافِرْ Clipping the nails. Okay. And the areas of the private, the hair in the areas of the private. Okay, such as the armpit and the front. And the ulama, they say you're not allowed to delay or it is disliked to delay or the person shouldn't delay these sunan more than how many days? 40. Mutaz. And also number six, i'fa'u lihyati leaving the beard. Hukmuha wajibun. And cutting it is a major, a sin, a major sin from the major sins. And number seven is a siwak. And it's from the sunnah to do a siwak. And we'll get to the sunnah of wudu anyway. Now, moving now to a dars al thalitha ashar, 13th. Furud al wudu. The obligations of wudu. Where he has sittatun. And they are six. Number one, ghaslu al wajhim wa minhu al madmadatu wa stinshaku. All of this is taken from one hadith. Who knows? Good. The hadith of Uthman and Affan, and he done wudu, all of the steps, and then he said, I saw the Prophet do wudu, mithla wudu ihada. Mithla wudu ihada. I saw him do the example of my wudu here. And he said, that whoever does this and then prays to Raka, and he spoke to the rest of the hadith. So, Ghasul Wajhi, washing the face. What have we forgot? What's before that? Hands. That shows you this is not in furud al wudu. It's not obligatory. Ghasl al wajhi wa minhu al madmada. What's madmada? Naam. Gargling. What's tinshaq? Not gargling, actually. You lift your. You just move around the water in your mouth. And it's tinshaq is that taking the water into your nose. Now, some of the ulama they say you have to do it in one. One scoop. So you go like this. Not that you do one and like this. Although some people find it hard. And if they find it hard, the ulama sakatat. La wajiba ma'al ajz. Okay? Also, what's not added in here as well? 
فروض ديس الواجبات something that you're studying the testimony is not in here which means the sheikh it shows it's not of the opinion likewise sheikh muhammad al wahhab in his shurut salah karam wajibat ha there is a, a long difference of opinion in that and as he can confirm there's as even two aqwal from imam ahmed there's one where he even says la laysa bi shay thabit there's nothing that's uh, authentic for it because the hadith that they rely upon لا صلاة لمن لا يتوضع أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم paraphrasing there is no صلاة for the one who doesn't have wudu there's a اختلاف in the wording of first or there's a اختلاف in the سند علماء they mention is ضعيف some mention is authentic although some say there's شواهد it has extra شواهد but the meaning also what's meant sometimes they say is لا is not the لا of it's a لا الكراهية it's for the كراهية it's for the it's disliked or it's best to do it. But here, this is the law of which is telling you, informing you. Meaning, it's a khabar. It's just informing you that, uh, and, and the other one say no, it's prohibiting. So we play the qaida, which is, there's a few qawaid you can play in this issue, which is number one, إذا ورد الاحتمال بطل الاستدلال. Because there's various views on how to see the hadith and what its meaning is. And it's a valid, because it's ihtimalat mutazawi. Not any ihtimal, because someone could just make their own ihtimal, their own view. Oh, I think it looks like this. Oh, I think it's this. No. It's mutazawi. You have a valid point. If that's the case, batulul istidlal. In point of differing, you don't use that as evidence. You have to use something that's more thabit. But what's best, arjah. And what's more safe is that you say it خلافاً خروجاً من الخلاف Okay, this is obviously if you take the view If you don't take either of the view Then it's just best Or if you, even if you take the view that it's not wajib It's just best Something as well Ibn Uthaymin mentioned and others before him مسألة الأحوض خروجاً من الخلاف Just to stay away from the different, right? Especially brothers and sisters If there's something when you find two issues One is saying haram One is saying halal What's the safe side? Halal? La. Haram is the, to say haram is the safe side. But if someone's saying karaha, although we don't look down at karaha, and someone says halal, even though it's still safe side to not karaha, stay away from it. And then one is saying it's permissible, and the one is saying it's from adat, it's got nothing to do, it's just normal. You see? Then this one is different. So we always take the uh, safest option. Okay? As-salamat la ilaha yadiluha shay. Okay, what about if the person, I know we've gone into the basmala, it's not really in this case now. What about if the person, I'm not sure, Akhuna uh, Hakim searches, maybe he can import. What about if the person is in a position where he's going to mention the name of Allah in the toilet? Allah, did you reach that? Bah? Fadl. So, someone asked me if I was here as well, one that says that you avoid it and say it in your heart. There's another that then says, because you're not on the actual action and now in a different um, position, if that makes sense. The, the, the bidding was when the act was taking place of you using the bathroom. For you actually now, after you will you should still say it out loud. Mm. So those are the two views. As the two views you come across, there's actually a third view as well. There's a third view as well. Uh, just to go over the view the brother mentioned, he said that once they say that you say it in the heart because you're in a place that's filthy. You shouldn't mention the dhikr of Allah, and this is obviously to raise Allah's mention, right? Second is that you're forced, basically in a nutshell, they're saying because you're in a situation where you can't think, you're, you're forced, right? There is a third view, and the third view is they say that la wajiba ma'al ajz, the whole thing drops off you anyway. Why? La wajiba ma'al ajz, just like you can't, if you can't stand praying, you sit. If you can't sit, you stand. And just like if you come into the salah, you miss the fatiha, you just do the ruku' with him. There's no obligation when you don't have the ability, for when there's inability, right? Um, so, uh, and also just to, uh, not, not, not to go delve deep in, but the view that says you say in the heart, like Allah Alam, it seems like a weak view, or it's, I can't really say that, I'm not Alim, but Mahalu Nadar. Okay, it's a bit odd, why? Because you're still remembering Allah. You're not meant to remember Allah in the toilet anyway. So you're saying in the heart, you still remember Allah. Because they're trying to flee from remember Allah on the tongue. But you haven't still 
Because you imagine you're in the toilet, you're still gonna remember Allah. So, you know, uh, yeah, that's just an issue that I thought would be intriguing to add. Um, so anyway, we move on. غسل وجهي ومنه المضمضة واستنشاقه. Then ثاني غسل يديني من المرفقين. Washing the hands من ال مع المرفقين. Okay, washing the hands with the mirfaq. And here, a lot of people make a mistake. They start from the wrist. No. You have to do the whole hand along up all the way to above the elbow. Not just start from the wrist when you're washing the arm. Because they hear arm, mirfaqaini, ma'al yadain though. You have to do it with the yad. All of that. Tholan. And lengthwise. Thani or thalith. Wa mas'hu jami'u al-ra'as wa minhu al-udhunani. Washing the whole head and from it includes the udhunan. And that's why in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal didn't mention the udhun. Okay, وَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ Allah said, wash it with your, and wash your head. But that's why they say the ear is part of the head anyway. And also it's come in the hadith that he did, that this is what has reached us, the details in the hadith. وَغَسْلُ الرِّجْلَيْنِ مَعَ الْكَعْبَيْنِ And also washing the two feet with the ankles, so just above the ankles. خَامِسْ وَالتَّرْتِيبُ That a person should have a tartib. والموالات and the person should have so ترتيب they should follow that sequence so you can't start with for example the arm up into the elbow the hand up into the elbow no you can't start with that you can't start with the feet you have to do it in the order and sequence it was revealed والموالات what does موالات means موالات means continuation and this is taken from the hadith or this is taken also from the fact that, uh, from from uh, the, the person who, uh, that's why the ulama, they give a babit for what muwalat is. What's the babit? Babit means what is the criteria to know what muwalat is. Muwalat means continuation. So for example, now somebody done wudu, and they literally just went on their phone and checked their WhatsApp. Okay, very distracted individuals, they love their phone. They go, oh. I'm in the middle of wudu, but this WhatsApp is so important. I need to see it. Message. And it was like one minute went past. What do you think about that? A whole minute. Allahu Akbar. They're going to have to repeat it. What do you say? They're going to have to repeat it. Sisters, we have two, two repetitions here. What do you say? He spent a minute looking at his phone in the middle of the face. He didn't pass the face. He washed his face before he gets to his hand. Just looked at his phone for a minute. Mumtaz, that's the babit. The ulama, the babit they put is if it dries. And they get that from sahibu, the person who lum'a, he had the. How, how do we get it from there though? Because if it was just that he could come and wash it again, he would have been told just Exactly. It's not that he said his. Elbow. If I said that his elbow was dry, then he would have then then like he because if because if, if he was to, if it was the fact that oh okay he can still come back, but it was the elbow that's dry, he can't just do the elbow and go because then his thing there's a sequence. But because the foot was the last one and foot is the last thing, he could have went back and just done the foot, but he didn't. The prophet said repeat it. That shows that if it goes dry, it cuts. If it goes dry. It cuts the continuations. So you have to start again. So that's the barbit of muwalat, continuation. So if you on your phone and you say, mashallah, that one minute turned into a two, or even that one minute was enough for your face to dry, you turn into two. Like, oh, anyway. And then you say, let me go to my hand. No, you have to start again with your dry face. <laughs> you have to start again. Okay? Tayyip, <laughs> will you stop? <laughs> ويستحب تكرار غسل الوجه واليدين والرجلين ثلاثة مرات. What is مستحب is that you do it three times. This is coming the Hadith of Athna رضي الله عنه. نعم أنا ألمض ماذا واستنشاق. Also the putting in the mouth and the face. Oh sorry the nose. والفرض من ذلك مرة ومرة وحن. What but what is obligatory? You at least do it once. Okay. What is the only thing that you don't do three times? Rats, good. Masha rats. Wiping the head, 
you only do it once. Okay? كَمَا دَلَّتِ الْأَحَادِيثِ الصَّحِيحَةِ الدرس الرابع عشر The 14th lesson نواقض الوضوء What are those things now that destroy a person's wudu? What are those things that nullify a person's wudu? الخارج من السبيلين والخارج الفاحش النجس من الجسد الخارج من السبيلين is the first one Anything that comes from the two parts That's wind any pre-semen or semen itself or any uh you know wet dream or any yani hatta blood okay in the case of the woman and it could be in the case of a man i don't know what the situation is or um you know which obviously not a good sign for men um and uh obviously urine and obviously uh the you know number two the excrement now والخارج الفاحش النجس من الجسد. That is what is that? The second one, the filth that comes from the body. What is that? Like blood, like blood and pus, yeah, blood and stuff like that. But here the blood is a barbit. The ulama they mention. What's the barbit? Is it a lot? Yes. دم اليسير يعفى عنه. Demul yasir yu'fa'an. The little blood, so for example, you're praying in your salah, okay? And it happens to a lot of people, especially during summer, they get very, very hot, a bit of blood comes out of their nose. Right? And you go, you go like that, you just really put it, just tiny one drop, you, 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 or you wipe it while you're in prayer, you get a tissue, you can wipe because you can move for a reason, we already mentioned that. Right? And then that's it, nothing else comes out. This is permissible. You can still pray, you can still continue your salah. And your wudu is not broken, nor is your salah. But if it's running, and continuous flow, okay? Or it, maybe it cuts, but it flows for a decent amount, okay? Then yes, that broke your wudu. How do you know if it's a lot or not? Uh, we know via the running of it. So for example, if it's more than norm. So for example, you know what's little, if there's like a little bit pops out, a little bit of blood pops out, and then you wipe it and then that's it. It's not flowing anymore. But when you wipe it and it's not stopping and it keeps coming out, that's how you know it's a continuous flow. Okay? So for the law, it's just coming down on the thing. So what happens if it's just that? You are? Basically, like if you have a nosebleed, mm. it's like, mm. you see it just dripping. Yeah, if you see it dripping, if you see it dripping, then, and obviously it's continuous dripping, if it's like one or two drops, that's okay. But if it's like dropping, drop, 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 you have to, first of all, it's best you leave anyway, because you're going to mess up everywhere. <laughs> okay, and your own self. And how long are you going to stand holding them drops? Okay. وزوال العقل بنوم أو غيره زوال العقل the mind leaving due to sleep or other than that coma getting put into a sleep and unconscious and similar to that as always um morphine or oh, not morphine what do they call it? what's the one that takes people to sleep again uh, yeah and is that an anesthetic yeah anesthetic all of that anything that takes you to sleep such that zawal al aql, that's the barbit, the mind is gone. And similar to that is intoxication. So a person with billah takes a drug, becomes high, intoxicated, khalas, yani, your wudu is gone. When you sober up, you have to do wudu again. And obviously, salah is not accepted, it's obligatory, but it's not accepted for 40 days. But you still have to pray. رابع ومحس ومسح الفرج باليد قبلا كان أو دبرا من غير حائل touching the private دبرا كان أو قبلا كان أو دبرا front or back بغير حائل without anything covered meaning مباشرة skin to skin if you touch the private skin to skin but here this one as there was another difference of opinion what are the views there's one they say, batulat in all cases if you touch it, regardless. There's one say, out of desires. Yes, there's one they say, out of desires. And then there's the view that says, as long, yani, uh, yeah, nah, nah, out of the, because then that means, if it's not out of desires or there's a reason, right? And, and there's another view that says, as long as, long as nothing comes out. 
And again, the best view is to take the Mas'alat al ahwal to stay clear. To stay clear. But inclining to the view that if there's like a reason or something, or it's an accident, then there's no problem. Okay? So for example, you're fixing yourself up, you're trying to fix your garment, maybe you put your, tuck your shirt under your finger, you actually need to put your hand and you touch your accident. Al-Khamisu Aklu Lahm al ibli And also eating the meat of the ibl, the meat of the camel. Okay? This is t- simple and it's a clear cut hadith. The Prophet was asked and he said, Do I have to do anatawadda'u min luhum al ghanami? Do we uh, do wudu from the laham of the ghanam, of the, ca- of the cattle? He said, If you want to. He said, You can if you want to and you can leave if you want to. That's the cattle. What is the cattle? Cow. Afwan. Cattle includes evil dog. Let's just say uh, 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 nah, cow and sheep and stuff like that, sheep and goats. But then he said, and what about the ibel? And then he said, yes. But this one he didn't say if you want to, and that's authentic. Nah. And the hadith is Hadith Jabir ibn Samarata. Hadith Jabir ibn Samarata. He said, Atawadda'u min luhum al ghanami. Kala in shitta fatawadda, wa in shitta fala tawadda. If you want to. Kala atawadda'u min luhum al ibn. Kala naam fatawadda min luhum al ibn. Naam. And then also he's asked, Qala usalli. Then he said, Usalli. Also, there's another hadith, Usalli fi marabit al ghanami. Can I pray in what? The places of where the cow and the goats are. Qala naam. Qala usalli fi marabit al mabarik al ibil. What about the places of the ibil? The cow. Qala la. Akhrajuhu Muslim. And also the hadith of Bara ibn Azim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked, uh, he was asked about wudu from eating camel meat. He said, minha do ghusl, do, do wudu do to it. Was and he was asked about uh, cows and uh, yani, uh, cattle. la minha. Now, now moving on. Waridatu an al Islam. And also apostating from Islam. A person apostates from Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. What about as some may as some include Ghaslul Mayit washing the dead? Depending on what you're washing. Could be said. Could be said that. Because of touching the private. Huh? No, no other guesses? No, I'm from that. Just two opinions. Tafadal sister. Did you say the two opinions? Yeah, there is two opinions because one says yes and that one says no. Nah, one says you do ghus, you do wudu, and that one says you don't do wudu. The correct view is that is sahih and no la yunqadul wudu. Le adamid ma yathbutu in a dalil. Due to the lack of what is the evidence is authentic therein. But some give exception, as what Hakim mentioned. If you've touched the private, bidun ha'il, and that's why when you do ghusul, we're going to get to, we're going to get to the chapter of washing taghsil uh, al washing the dead, that you have to have a ha'il, something that when you're washing and you get to the private area, 
there's there's you know you have to have like a brush or something that you're washing with. <clears throat> nah. And it's anyway, really and truly, when a person's washing, it's, it's obligatory. That is how you wash the dead. You don't touch it. But say it, he the person touched it. Uh, and also, uh, the Muslim, uh, and also similar to that, that doesn't break wudu, is touching women. I'm talking about the dead now, though. I'm talking about touching women. Because obviously, his brother doesn't wash the dead woman. Anyway. Um, Touching a woman, obviously your maybe your wife, you know your wife, uh, whether it's from shahwa or not shahwa, it doesn't matter. Okay, because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he embraced and kissed Aisha and he didn't, he didn't do remove his wudu. Although there are some ulama who say that you have to, as long as something doesn't come out, because then that takes you back to al kharij min al sibilaini number one. The first thing that removes you is what comes out of the private. And also due to the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, because it, and also due to the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قَبْلَ بَعْضِ uh, نَعْمْ أَمَّا قَوْلَ As for the statement of Allah where he says, أَوْ لَا مَسْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ That because some of the ulama, they hold the view that touching the woman breaks your fast, they take this from the verse where Allah says, أَوْ لَا مَسْتُمْ And that you touch the nisa women. The ulama they say actually al huna means jima'ah, intercourse. It's not just mere touch. Okay? And this is the most authentic statement of the ulama. And it's the qawl of Ibn Abbas wa jama'atun min al-salaf wal khalaf. The group of the salaf and the khalaf. Naam. Naam. As for sleeping, going back a bit, just on uh, Muzawal al-Aql, when the mind goes, sleeping, is sleeping the reason? What's the reason? Good, the mind has gone. So sleeping in itself is not the reason. So that means if you take a slumber or a doze, which are under the, you know, their sisters to sleep in, you know, the cousins of sleep, right? Hence they say daydream, right? These things, if that happens, okay, then, and the person still is somewhat level of what, conscious, partially or whatever, kind of knows what's going on, all right? So for example, if you close your eyes and you hear Quran and then you doze off for like 20 minutes or whatever, but then you kind of rise up again, but you knew all that time the Quran was being recited. You remember Quran being recited. All right? As for you go to sleep, you don't even hear the Quran, you don't know what's going on. You wake up and even for the split quick second, you think, why is Quran on? And then you remember, oh, it was on the fire. That is the proof. Yeah. Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, as for Masil. As for touching the private back and forth, here's a, here's a note of benefit. Sheikh Salman Taymiyyah, he was of the opinion that you is tehbab. It's recommended to do wudu if you watch the private. He didn't say wajib. He said istihbab. This is very good as an addition. Why? As a student of knowledge, whenever you hear the aqwal of Ibn Sheikh Salman Taymiyyah, after the madahid al arba, when you hear and Ibn Taymiyyah said, and Ibn Qayyim said, okay, then it's interesting for you to also note that down. It's always nice to know what was the motive of Ibn Taymiyyah in this. That's why the ulama, they mention, the student cannot go without the books of Sheikh Sabi Taymiyyah and his student Ibn Qayyim. Why? They are in every single chapter they have a say. Every single chapter. You want to learn about Maghazi? The battles and wars, you want to learn about history, you want to learn about Sirah, you want to learn about the Firaq, you want to learn about Aqeedah, Fiqh, all of the Masail in Fiqh. You want to learn about the chains of narration, you want to learn about narrators, all of that. There's a call of Ibn Taymiyyah and a call of Ibn Qayyim. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Giants. Rahimahumullah. So we'll stop there, inshallah ta'ala. I need to kind of stop early as well myself. Um, Next week, inshallah, we're going to do performances. I know I said this week, Qadr Allah, 
I'm even thinking about um, possibly even getting a bucket, basket or uh, a, a bucket or something, and literally do the wudu, uh, perform the wudu. Uh, but we'll see. And um, also tayammum, a sifa to tayammum. We're going to show the sifa to tayammum, inshallah ta'ala. And for that, inshallah, maybe the sisters can come at the back and just watch. Uh, Naam. And then also we're going to talk about the shurut of mas'h al khafaini. There's conditions for mas'h al khafaini. And how to, wash the, uh, how to wipe the khafain, the socks. How to wash, wash the, the socks or the khuf. Um, also, adab uh, qada al hajah. We're going to talk about some adab or qada al hajah, some etiquettes of relieving oneself. Um, then, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to give you guys some homework. Bidnillah is two, three tables, three tables, some questions and three tables, charts. So I want you to revise the chapter of Shurutu Salah, Arkanu Salah, Wajibat, Shurutu Wudu, Furudu Wudu. Okay. Um, now, and also, I'm going to talk about some points, as I mentioned, in regards to um, when a person's praying. Some of the errors that people do when they're praying, where they place their hands, the rukur, how they're in the rukur, how it is when you've got to pray with somebody, if it's a one or if it's more than one, right? All of that, there's etiquettes for that. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha anta staghfiruk wa tubalik. Alhamdulillah, you've got some time to relax before Ustad's class. I need to shoot off. So I'll see you all next week, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum. وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي